course with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Say, youngsters, what's your favorite summer fruit? If it's peaches, blueberries, or pineapple, it would make a delicious Betty Crocker upside-down cake. All you need is a package of Betty Crocker yellow cake mix. It's so easy... The finest ingredients are right in the package. Ingredients like soft as silk cake flour and pure vegetable shortening. You just add water and two fresh eggs. Beat and bake. For the upside down part, line a square pan with a fruit and a sprinkling of brown sugar. Then pour in half the batter and bake. Your mom can use the extra batter for a breakfast cake topped with brown sugar and cinnamon. And Betty Crocker yellow cake turns out perfect every time. In fact, Betty Crocker guarantees a perfect cake every time you bake. Cake after cake after cake. Perfect or write General Mills, Minneapolis, Minnesota for your money back. Keep several packages of Betty Crocker yellow cake mix on hand and enjoy one soon. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'm Silver. Hooray! Tonto, Indian companion to the Lone Ranger, returned from the town of Stockton to a camp in the hills where the masked man was waiting. Oh, scout. Oh, fella. Easy, scout. Easy, fella. Did you inquire at the post office for mail, Tonto? Uh, me get letters that come from Dan. Oh, good. Yeah. I've been waiting to hear from him since he went back to school. Let's see what he has to say. Wait, I'll uh, read it aloud, Tonto. Oh, that good. Dear Uncle and Tonto... I miss being with you very much and can't wait for the Christmas holidays to come so that I may be with you again. <laughs> Dan, like all other boys, Kimasabi, him wants schooling but look forward to vacations. Eh? That's right. <laughs> he goes on to say, I had a little trouble when I reached the town where I changed from the stagecoach to the train. A fellow a couple of years older than I was browbeating a young Indian brave at the station. I interfered and got a terrific black eye for my trouble. <laughs> but you ought to see the other fellow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dan, grown up plenty fast, Kimasabi. <laughs> what else him say? Let's see. The Indian boy who said his name is Little Bear insisted I take a carved silver medallion he wore around his neck on a thin chain. In return, I gave him a silver bullet I had in my pocket. I'm sending the medallion to Tonto to keep for me as soon as I can locate a small box to send it in. The fellow whose name I found out later is Max Casson. Swore he'd get even with Little Bear. I'm sure the Indian will keep out of his way. You think young fellow Casson related to outlaw Lou Casson? Maybe. Uh, Dan Wright Moore? Yes, he closes by saying, It won't be long before I'll be with you and Tonto again for the Christmas vacation. Your nephew, Dan. P.S. <laughs> Here it comes, Tonto. <laughs> um... Me know what him say when him write P.S. <laughs> listen, listen. I thought I brought plenty of money with me to last until I saw you again. But somehow I seem to be running low. Just thought I'd mention it. <laughs> I'll keep waiting to hear from you, Dan. <laughs> him mean him wait to get more money from Lone Ranger. <laughs> yes, Tonto. I know Dan doesn't squander his money. Most likely he helps someone who is in need. He does that often. All right, I'll send him some. Ah, uh, uh, me be glad when holiday comes. So shall I, Tonto. I miss Dan very much. A few days later, Tonto again visited the post office and returned to camp with a small box containing the medallion Dan had mentioned in his letter. The Lone Ranger and Tonto examined it closely. 
There seems to be an Indian inscription carved into it, Tonto. Ah. It's a great spirit. Protect Little Bear. Son Comanche chief. Mm. The Indian lad Dan helped as a chieftain's son. Ah. Oh, uh, why not wear it on a chain around your neck, Tonto? Then it will be safe until Dan returns. Mm, that good idea. <clears throat> Me put on chain and medallion. You know, Tonto, I've been thinking... If the boy who fought Dan is related to Lou Casson, he might keep in touch with the outlaw. That's right. Now, Dan took the train at Meadville. We go to that vicinity and make a few inquiries. It's just a few hours' ride from uh. here. All right, we'll break camp now and head for Meadville. At a hideout cabin in the hills near Meadville, Lou Casson, the outlaw leader, and his men listened to the story Lou's nephew Max told concerning his fight with Dan Reed. The gang had just come to that territory, and it was Max's first chance to talk to his uncle. He finished by saying, I've thought of a way you and the gang could get plenty for yourself and help me get even with that young Indian at the same time. Go ahead, Max. Tell us about it. Briefly, Max outlined his plan to have the gang disguise themselves as Comanches and commit several raids and robberies. The Comanches, who had signed a peace treaty, would be blamed and punished. Lou not only agreed with the idea but decided to get the help of a renegade Apache chief, Black Crow, and his band, and attack the fort while the troopers were out after the Comanches. Lou remarked, We'll go along with your plan, Max, and when we're through, you'll have your revenge on that young Comanche. The following morning, Lou Casson's gang, disguised as Comanches, and accompanied by Max and the renegade chief, Black Crow, held up a stagecoach near Meadville. Then moved into town and robbed the express office. Come in and just robbed the express Let office. You've been catfish. The Comanches have broken the treaty. If they all go on the warpath, none of us will be safe. Yeah, that's right. And I'll send somebody to Fort Wales to notify the commandant. I'll go, Sheriff. Good. Go as fast as you can. Tell him what happened. He'll know what to do. <laughs> After the robbery in town, Lou ordered the gang to ride in pairs, cover their trails, and head for the hideout. Max and Slick rode together. On the way to the hideout, they saw a hunting party of three young Comanches coming around the bend. Yeah, look, Slick. Three young Comanche braves. One of them looks like the Indian I had trouble with. Yeah, we can't let him see us in these disguises. Head into the gully, quick. Come on, get up, get up. Get up. Oh, 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 oh. Sure, they didn't see us. This is my chance. We'll gun them for me. Now hold on, Max. Maybe we better. I wait. won't miss a chance like this. Here they come. Use your gun too, Slick. All right. Oh, we hit one of them. I think it's the one I wanted to get. Let's make sure he's done for. Get up, get up. As the two outlaws rode from the gully and started toward the fallen Indian, they heard fast hoofbeats approaching beyond the bend. Oh, 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 oh. Somebody coming. Better get away fast. Yeah. We're we'll right over the ridge. Quick. Come on. Get, get up. up. Get up, boy. A few moments later, the Lone Ranger and Toto stopped beside the fallen Indian. Who's oh, 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 Comanche brave. He's seriously wounded. Uh, you. You. Not one who. Uh, I'm unconscious now. Yes. We may camp up in that grove and give him first aid, Toto. The masked man and his Indian friend bandaged the young brave's wound and made him comfortable. Leaving Toto with the unconscious Indian, the Lone Ranger went back to the place where they had found him and looked around. Soon he returned to the camp. Who's oh, 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 steady, big fellow? What you find, Kimasabi? Two horsemen waited in the gully and ambushed the Indian. I found the tracks of two horses. Also, those of two Indian ponies that led away from the spot. Ah. And what we do? You stay with the wounded brave, Toto. I'll follow those tracks and try to find out who shot him. Later, we'll see if... Silver, here's something. Can you give... Look, Indians moving in on our camp. Take cover quickly, Toto. Uh -huh. As the horde of yelling savages moved in on all sides, the situation seemed hopeless. Now, Sandy, them not try hit us with bullets. That means they've been told to take us alive. And if not good, then torture us, maybe. Toto, call out. Tell them we give up. Maybe we'll be able to reason with our chief. He's with them. Let's go! Let's go! Hurry, 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 hurry. Uh, meet 
take guns. Me, Chief Big Elk. You fire on hunting party. Kill Comanche. You pay with life. The Lone Ranger and Tonto, surrounded by angry Comanches and without their guns, realized the situation was serious. The Lone Ranger hurriedly whispered to Tonto. Tonto, we must convince the chief we didn't ambush that hunting party. Chief Big Elk. You're brave isn't dead. He's over there, wounded. You shoot at Little Bear, son of Chief. You wound brave. No, Chief Big Elk. We helped your brave. Him we were... lie. Big Elk, try keep treaty with white man. You break treaty. You try kill Comanche. Comanche, punish by fire. Malaga, take off mask from face of tall one. So braves watch him suffer. Then tie them to trees. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's one that the happy people have to say. Take champions down south. They sure enough know about Wheaties. The Southland's favorite Wheaties fan is Musial, known as Stan the Man. Because when he swings his mighty bat, he nearly knocks that baseball flat. Another Southland pride and joy is Bobby Lane, a Wheaties boy. Because when he starts to turn on steam, he's sure a one-man football team. Just ask Stan Musial or Bobby Lane. They know the secret of Wheaties' energy. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties' flake. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be doo-doo-doo and okay. Okay. Now to continue. Chief Big Elk ordered the Braves to seize the Lone Ranger and Tonto and tie them to trees. As strong hands grasped the masked man and Tonto, the two men struggled, and Tonto's shirt was torn open. Suddenly, Little Bear called out. Oh, wait! Strange Indian wear charm Little Bear give young white friend. He's our friend, too, Little Bear. Not right. No. Maybe you shoot young white friend. Take charm. Wait, Little Bear. He gave you something. A silver bullet. Ah. Here, silver bullet charm him give me. Now, look in my belt. There are also silver bullets. Like the one Dan gave to you, I gave him that bullet charm. Little Bear was convinced when he saw the silver bullets carried by the Lone Ranger. He persuaded the chief to take them to the village and wait until the wounded brave could tell what happened. At the village, the Lone Ranger and Tonto were taken into a wigwam and tied. An hour later, Little Bear entered. Brave has spoken. He say two Indian ride toward him from gully after shooting. They ones who try kill us. You... Indian friend, scare him away. You no longer prisoner. I free you. Thanks, little bear. For here, your gun. Good. Ah. The tracks I found in the gully are those of shod horses, little bear, not of Indian ponies. Oh, me not savvy. Indian not ride pony with iron shoes. I know. I don't know. I'll go follow the trail. We may find the ones who are guilty. Well, little bear, go too. Very well. Take us to our horses. Later, the three men reached the gully and found the tracks left by Max and Slick. The tracks led to the opposite side of town and back into the foothills. Finally, the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Little Bear approached the rim of the canyon. They stopped and dismounted among the trees. Oh, oh, easy. Oh, easy. Oh, easy. All right, we'll move cautiously to the rim of the canyon and try to find out where those horsemen went. Come on. Oh. They crawled through the brush at the rim of the canyon and looked down. Look, Kimasabi. Indian village. Wait, I'll use my field glasses. Mm -hmm. The patches. Here, you look. Ah. Kimasabi. Yes? Men in front of Chief's wigwam take off war bonnets, put on sombreros. Them white men. You look, little bear. Ah. We got to them jump close, little bear. They just seem closer. Don't be afraid of the glasses. Oh, me, me not afraid. Glasses, good magic. For me, see Chief. Him bad Indian. Him Apache renegade. Black Crow. Him talk with braves in sign language. You and Toto try to figure out what he says. Ah. 
For a few moments, Toto and Little Bear took turns watching. Toto interpreted what they found out. He must have it. Yes. Him tell braves, white brothers, dressed as Comanche, rob stage, rob express office, and him say this, get Comanche in trouble. What else? And him tell braves, man from town, go for troopers at fort. Him say troopers sure to leave fort, punish Comanche. Oh, that's bad. And him say Apache take back trails to fort, attack while troopers away. Oh, so that's it. Little Bear, we ride to your village to tell Chief Big Elk. You convince him the best thing to do will be to take all of his braves and go with us to meet the troopers. Ah, uh, that's good. Apache getting away. Leave all right, we'll have to hurry. Come on. Meantime, the troopers left the fort after receiving word of what had happened. Led by Major Downs, they rode the main trail toward Meatville. I had hoped that we could trust Chief Big Elk. I hope you brought enough troopers. I brought almost all I had at the fort. Tony Mackerel, look, coming around the bend. The Comanche. Those in front are holding a white cloth on a pole. A flag of truce. It may be a trick. Troopers! Ho! Ho, 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 ho. The Indians have stopped, too. Now three of them are riding toward us. Hey, look. One of them is not an Indian, and he's masked. I don't understand this. We'll be ready for them if it's a trick. Oh, 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 oh. Good afternoon, Major. We came to meet you. So I see. Carry a flag of truce. I'll give you three minutes to say what you have to say. What's more, I don't understand that mask. Uh, I'm Lone Ranger. Maybe you hear a masked man who rides white stallion. The Lone Ranger? Why, Jiminy. I've heard of him plenty. You're really the Lone Ranger? That's right. Well, I'm glad to meet you, sir. Why are you with Chief Big Elk? We had word that some of his braves had run a mud. Oh, wait, we... please, let me explain. Quickly and briefly, the Lone Ranger told what they had found out about the group of men and the Apaches in the canyon. He finished by saying... Chief Big Elk agreed to bring his braves to help prevent the attack on the fort, Major. No doubt the Apaches are already on their way by another route. We'll be glad to have the Comanche's help. We'll return to the fort at the double. Troopers! Cut them left! Forward! Oh! Oh! Later, behind a ridge overlooking the fort, Black Crow and Lou Casson made last preparations for the attack. It's time to go, Black Crow. We'll ride over the ridge yelling and shooting to draw their fire. Then have your braves gradually move closer. They'll cover for others to follow with a log to ram open the gates. Uh, now we start attack. <laughs> Two men stationed at the fort fought back gallantly as the Apaches moved in. Max and the other members of the gang rode close to Lou Casson and were careful to stay out of gun range. The inadequate defense of the fort was immediately evident and soon protected by constant gunfire from the attacking horde. Several braves carrying a large log moved to the heavy gates to ram them open. Lou and his men rode close so as to be among the first to enter. In a few minutes they'll have the gates open. Let some of the Indians go in first to clear the way. Then we'll go in to get the loot. Look, troopers coming from the right. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, and Indians moving in from the left and behind us. We're trapped. The Major and the Lone Ranger had planned their counterattack well. The troopers and the Comanches moved in at a fast pace, firing as they rode. For a short time, the battle raged. But the Apaches, taken by surprise and far outnumbered, were soon subdued. And those who were not killed or wounded were rounded up and disarmed, including the outlaw gang. The Lone Ranger, with a major, Chief Big Elk, Little Bear, and Tonto, pulled to a halt before Black Crow, who was huddled with the outlaw. Oh, 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 They're the men who planned this attack with Black Crow, Major. I recognize one of them, Lou Casson, the outlaw leader. I'm not one of the gang. My uncle forced me to come along. Shut up, you whining little coyote. You gave us the idea to pose as Indians, didn't you? Yeah. And he's the one who insisted we ambush the Comanche hunting party. Oh, him fella fight young white friend Dan in Meadville a while back. Dan give him plenty good beat. Oh, shut up. If I could meet that young maverick again... Too I... bad you'll not be around for such a meeting. I'd like to watch it. But you spend a great deal of time behind bars for what you've done. You'll give him to Comanche for Indian punishment. No, Chief Big Elk. The law will take care of him. We'll see to it that all of them get what's coming to them. We'll hold them at the fort until proper disposition is made of their cases. The Apaches will be sent to a reservation. Good enough. They're in your hands now, Major. 
Thanks to you, sir. Todd and I were glad to help. Oh, little bear. When Dan comes back at Christmas time, I'm sure he'll come to see you. Oh, me be happy see young white friend again. Him plenty brave, plenty strong. Dan will be pleased to hear what you've said about him, little bear. I'm sure you and your father will live in peace from now on with your tribe. That's right. We make treaty, we keep treaty. You've proved to be good allies today, Chief Big Elk. And the great white father in Washington will hear of your help and be very pleased. Uh, that good. Hello, we'll leave now. Adios, everybody. Goodbye, Goodbye. 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 Let's go. There goes a man who's a great friend to Indians and white men alike. You know, today will always stand out in my memory as the day I met the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.